Don't call me, maybe. By Andai. Chapter two. Getting settled. Shona shouldn't be surprised when he looks up from grading his papers that afternoon to find a notification from a group text he had no idea he was in. Sighing and scrolling through the chat, he realized that Ida had probably added him. Shoda couldn't even see Yao Yorozu doing it, and that the rest of the class also probably had no idea that he was in the chat if their casual language and subject matter was anything to go by. Shoda couldn't see any messages prior to when he'd be added to the chat, but there must have been some unless Ashi Docero and Araraka had randomly started the middle of a conversation as soon as the chat had been created. At least, as I would thought, I think it's them. He cringed at some of the nicknames, but figured that even teenager heroes in training were still teenagers. Class 1A! Group chat. You were added at 1624. Chat includes Funky Elbows, Cero, Alien Green, as you know, Nyong, Ida, Small Bean, Midoriya, Mr. Murder, Bakugo, Mind Meld, Shinzo, Tentacle Hentai, Shoji, Naked Streaker, Agagare, Kung Fu Panda, Ojiro, Yao Mamo, Yao Yorozu, Defying Gravity, Everbaka, Twink Thor, Kaminari, Get Hard, Kirishima, Punk Bitch, Jiro, Francophile, Aoyama, Kermit, Asui, Furry, Koda, Large Boy, Sato, Eji, Tokoyami, and Funk and Bever. Totoroki. Alien Queen. Okay, but just because he looks a little like Jimmy Fallon doesn't mean he's not still cute. Like 75% of his appeal is his personality. A man like man in this economy? Funky elbows. Less likely than you'd think. Defying gravity. We stand one Jesse from Pitch Perfect in this good Christian household. Thank you. Shona sighed as he watched the conversation progress, finding himself once more unsettled by all the pop culture references he understood thanks to his Aisha's influence. Finding two other unread message threads, he opened the shorter one first. 1620. Unknown number. Hello, Sensei. Thank you for giving us your personal number. It's an honor to be entrusted with it. Oh, I forgot to mention the reason I texted you. This is Yao Bozu, in case you wanted to add my number to your contacts. Aizawa gave a small smile and added the girl's name to her phone number before moving on to the next unread message. 1635. Ida Tenya. Aizawa Sensei, this is Ida Tenya. I wanted to send you a message immediately to give you my cell phone number in case either of us need to contact each other so you did not receive a message from an unknown number. I greatly appreciate your entrusting our class with your personal cell number. I understand that this is a serious matter and is not to be taken lightly. I will try my best to ensure neither myself nor my classmates use it to bother you unnecessarily. As it stands, I have added you to the one a group chat I created for the purpose of ensuring good study habits and topics of heroic discussion. It occasionally becomes a general chat room, however. If you wish to mute notifications from that chat, you may certainly do so, but I thought it a good idea to add you so you might keep up with our class outside of school hours if you so wish. I am also granted you admin privileges as I found it appropriate. Aizawa sighed in fond exasperation before replying, Aizawa, Ida, I already have your number from when I had to watch you while your parents and Tensei were gone, but I appreciate the gesture. Not finding much more to say, he sent the message and went back to grading papers after muting the 1A general chat, hoping this all wouldn't cause him another headache. The next few weeks were mostly uneventful in terms of his students contacting him via his cell. Many of the students, including Todoroki, Uraraka, Asui, and Ojiro, texted him brief messages with their names so he had them for his contacts, which he appreciated. Others, such as Midoriya and Shinso, had already texted him before now, be it for medical reports from Recovery Girl's office or personal training, and therefore had no need. Once or twice, Shota found himself opening up the Class 1A group chat out of curiosity to see what the kids were discussing if he needed a small break from whatever he was working on. Topics of discussion ranged from the latest hero and villain battles to homework questions to offers of extra food to heated debate regarding everything from movies to music to pop culture, some of which showed up, regrettably, understood. 
Occasionally, he even learned new information about his students that he definitely should have known beforehand. Class 1A, group chat, 1832. Mr. Murder, I got dinner's ready a fox. Defying gravity. Ooh, it smells delicious. I'll be right now, thank you, Bakugokun. Mr. Murder. Fuck whatever, brown face. Someone has to do the cooking around here since all you burn the shit out of everything and that's coming from the fuck up with an explosion cork. Large boy. Hey! Mr. Murder. Okay, just because you can use the oven without setting off the smoke alarm doesn't mean you're good at cooking. Your talent lies in baking, so just stay in your corner. Get hard. Whoa, man! You just called him in Santo! I'm so proud, dude! Mr. Murder. Did not the fuck are you talking about shit here? Large boy. I might cry. Mr. Murder. I didn't fucking compliment you. Small bean. Screenshot. Your talent lies in baking. Mr. Murder. Fuck off, shit stain. Edgy. Is that food to me so smooth? Yo, mamo. It looks like it. Do you not like Vietnamese? Mr. Murder. Don't tell me you're a fucking picky ear. Edgy. It just smells like peanut oil. Mr. Murder. Yeah, that's because there's peanut oil in it, a piggy dipshit. Eat it or die. Edgy. More like eat it and die. I'm incredibly allergic to peanuts, Bakugo. Mr. Murder. There's leftover curry from last night in the fridge. It's on my shelf, but I'm not eating it tonight, and wasting it is a fucking dish move. Alien Queen. But, Bakugo, you are a dish! Mr. Murder. Fuck off, raccoon eyes, bitch! Edgy. I'll be done in a second to microwave the curry. Thank you, Bakugo. Mr. Murder. Fuck whatever. Twink Thor. Is no one gonna acknowledge that the literal bird person is allergic to nuts? Is no one gonna acknowledge that irony? Tentacle Hentai. No. Aizawa rolled his eyes at his student shenanigans, but added peanuts to Tokoyami's allergen file, which until now had been blank. A few days later, Aizawa was walking through the cafeteria during lunch trying to find Shinso to confirm their after-school training session when he caught a glimpse of Tokoyami sitting down across the cafeteria with his friends. His eyes locked on one of the items on the boy's plate, and before he knew it, he was rushing through the lunchroom, vaulting over tables with the expertise of a parkour fanatic. A few students mumbled as a boot narrowly avoided their meals, but weirder things happened in the school all the time, so they just went on as if nothing had happened. Aizawa reached Togoyami's table right as the boy was sitting down and reaching for his fork, eyeing the dish that had caught Shota's eye from across the room. In an instant, the homeroom teacher snatched his student's salad bowl, squinting at a miffed Togoyami as the students across from him that had witnessed his mad dash through the lunchroom watched in a muffled stupor. Sensei? Togoyami asked in a voice that was mostly deadpan and won by curiosity. Can I have my salad back, please? No. Aizawa retorted shortly before walking over to a trash can, dumping the salad in for emphasis, and returning the empty bowl to an affront to Tokoyami. What was that for? Tokoyami literally squawked as the rest of the table looked on in similar confusion. I just saved your life. Aizawa nipped and You're welcome. As he began to walk away with no further explanation, he heard Asmi speak up behind him. Tokoyami, aren't you allergic to peanuts? Yeah, the boy responded with confusion. Not to ruffle your feathers. Did you just make a pun? But there are peanuts in this salad, ghetto. A moment of silence passed before Kaminari spoke up. Oh, crap, dude, since I did just save your life. Yeah, I guess so. Was all Aizawa heard from a confused Ogoyami as he left the lunchroom and went to his desk to send out an email. The next day, there were placards at every food station listing potential allergies. And honestly, shouldn't they have had that already? <laughs> Shoto went over the basics of each of his students' medical files at the beginning of the year as a matter of thoroughness, but as he learned, some things were left out of the file either by simple accident, as in Togoyami's case, or due to anti-discrimination coverages. In Kaminari's case, apparently. Shota gawked at his phone screen as he scrolled through the conversation going on in the class chat on a Sunday morning. Class 1A! Group chat. 1245. Blink Thor. Hey yo, sorry to bug y'all, but do any of you ladies have a pad I can steal? I ran out and haven't been shopping in a while. Naked Streaker. Yeah, totally. I'll drop one off right now.
Mr. Murder. You know, you're in the class group chat, right? Twin Thor. Yeah? Don't tell me periods gross you out. It's all natural, dude. Punk bitch. Yeah, Bakugo, you're not a turf, right? I'll lose my shit. Mr. Murder. What the fuck? Of course I'm not one of those shits. I just didn't know if the portable charger was at the everyone in the class. Mind meld. You make it sound like he's gay, not trans. Twink Thor. When I'm both. Mind meld. Oh, worm. Twink Thor. But yeah, I'm out to everyone. The girls all know, and I kind of figured the guys did too since we've changed in more hero uniforms in the locker room so much. Mr. Murder. Cool, cool, just making sure. Define gravity. Oh, looky here, Bucky Ghost get heart. Mr. Murder, fuck off, bitch. I said, well, I was thrown for a loop. Common number was trans? He supposed he'd never seen the boy when he was changing in the locker rooms, but that should be something that's in his medical file. Confused how he missed something so important, Aizawa pulled up Kaminari's file on his laptop before sending out a slightly scathing message to the 1A teaching jack. The adults? Question mark? Group chat. Chat includes minus five hour energy. Eraser in. Y'all mine! All night. Brick house. Samantha's. King Shamer. Midnight. Ectoplasm. Yeet! Present Mike. And God. Nezu. 1312. Minus five hour energy. At God meet me in the pit. Yeet! Oh! Oh shit! Jonah's best! Brick house. He is usually irked, but this is actual anger. Minus five hour energy. Try rage. This is rage. God. Dare I ask what I supposedly did this time? Minus five hour energy. Can we please get more competent people to do this discriminatory information blocking? Yeet! Can I please get a waffle? Minus five hour energy. Really not the time, Sashi. Yeet! F. God. Might I ask why? Minus five hour energy. I just found out that one of my students is trans. And I had no idea. The school staff is probably the most progressive one in Japan, and while I understand students' right to private information, I have no idea if I should be watching them for signs of overbinding during training, or if they're on HRT that I need to be picking up prescriptions for now that they're living in the dorms, or literally anything else. King shame. Whoa, that's actually really bad. Minus five hour energy. That's why I'm pissed. God. I see, that is a legitimate concern. Let's move this to private message. Shota rolled his eyes, but complied. New group chat with All Might and Nezu created at 1340. Aizawa. I added All Might to this chat because he also teaches classes with physical attributes and hero training. And it's important for him to know this situation if this student ever hurts themselves more than usual. Yagi. More than usual? Nezu. Which student are you speaking of? Aizawa. You could say they short circuit a lot. Nagi. Ah, I'm coming out with that. Aizawa. Yes. Nezu. I'm looking at his files now. They should be updated for you and All Might to view in a few minutes. I'll make sure to look at the rest of the students who might have the same issue to ensure there aren't any others who slip through the cracks, and I'll be having a discussion with the people we hire to pull discrimination possible files from students' records. To make sure they realize what things are detrimental to the student to hide. Here's our thank you. Shoda gave a small half of satisfaction as he reloaded Kaminari's page to find it updated with the necessary information. Seeing something, he frowned and reopened his phone messages, pulling up his rarely used conversation thread with Toshinori. 1358, Aizawa. Just a heads up regarding what we were talking about with Kaminari earlier. How familiar are you with the practice of binding? It took a few minutes before the other man's response, which Aizawa used to pull up a few informative, reliable articles. Yagi. I'm afraid I'm not very well versed on it at all. I'm looking up information about transgender individuals right now, and I'm just realizing how much I don't know. Aizawa let himself smile at that. The old man might be grossly uneducated, but his passion for his students and his desire to improve himself to be the best teacher he can be for them is impossible not to see. Aizawa. I'm sending you a few informative articles about what you need to know. 
for the most part, just treat Kaminari like any other student. He'll know if you suddenly start treating him differently. It's probably one of the worst things you can do in a situation like this. The main thing that sticks out to me is that he hasn't undergone top surgery, which means he's almost certainly binding. Binding for more than eight hours a day can be extremely detrimental to anyone's health, much less a growing child's, and should never be done during intensive exercise, which means he hopefully wears a sports bra instead. Some of the links have the signs of overbinding, how it affects people, and easy steps to prevent it from happening. I'd recommend reading over those thoroughly as soon as you can. Yagi. I'll do it now. Thank you very much for the information, Aizawa Kun. You certainly know a lot about the subject. Aizawa. I'm not trans myself, but I have lots of experience in the area between close friends and past students. If you have any questions, please don't be afraid to ask me. Definitely don't ask Kaminari. In addition to being awkward, I'm not sure he knows the teachers are aware that he's trans, and I don't want to pressure him into coming out any sooner than he wants to. The only reason I made you aware of this situation is because there could be a medical emergency in which the information would be important. Yagi. I'll keep it in mind. Thank you. Might I ask, however, if young Kaminari isn't aware the teachers know, that must mean you found out some other way. Aizawa might have felt a small pang of guilt at the reminder that his class didn't realize he was launching the conversations. To be fair, he tried to reconcile situational awareness is something I emphasize in most of my lessons, and not noticing my name is in the chat members list is on them after this long. Aizawa, Ida added me to their group chat. I don't participate, but it helps me keep an eye out for them. Did you know Toguyami was allergic to peanuts? Because I didn't, and he almost ate some in the salad and lunch rush made last week before we put up allergen signs. Yagi. I commend you for your thoroughness, as I could but I must ask. Is it alright for you to be watching the conversations without them knowing? Aizawa cringed. Called out. Aizawa. I'm planning to make my presence in the chat known soon. I'm just waiting for the right moments. Whenever they talk about me, I skip past the conversation. I do try and respect their privacy. Yagi. Very well. It's not my business. Grimacing at the lingering feeling of disappointment from the other man, Aizawa closed his phone inside. He just needed to wait for the right moment for the reveal. A few days later, Shota found himself grading papers on the couch, Kaminari sitting next to him as he watched a documentary for one of his classes. Asui, Ashido, and Bakugo sat in the armchairs and on the floor, taking notes on the video as Kaminari slowly dozed off. By the time the documentary was over and the credits were rolling, the boy had dropped the pen and paper on his lap onto the floor and was leaning half over Aizawa, who was finding it increasingly difficult to grab papers. As the other three students in the room stood up and stretched, Aizawa noticed it had gotten pretty late. He looked down at Kaminari's half-finished notes and sighed. Asui, when is this assignment due? He asked, to which he blinked before replying, Next Wednesday. Aizawa gave a small hum of thought. It seemed that Kaminari was trying to break his habit of procrastinating his homework until the last minute. Ashido too. Shona shook Kaminari a little in an attempt to wake the boy up. Aizawa had told him not to fall asleep on him, damn it! But only succeeded in making the boy drop into his lap even more. <laughs> Hearing his small giggle, Aizawa sighed and looked up at Ashino, remembering the time he had to carry her to her bedroom when she fell asleep on him in a similar situation and refused to wake up to walk to her own bed. He is just like you, isn't he? Showed a ground. Yep! Mina answered tearily before yawning and saying goodnight, leaving Aizawa to realize he and Kaminari were the only two left downstairs. Praying for patience. Aizawa decided to just cut his losses. After all, no one else was around to see him do this again. Hefting his arms under Kaminari's knees, Shota lifted the boy up into a bridal-style carry and started climbing the stairs to the boy's floor. Once he got there and managed to swipe his all-access keycard, Shota pushed the door open with his hip and maneuvered his way to his student's bed before laying the boy down. As Shota put Kaminari's documentary notes and pen on the boy's cluttered desk, he realized something and had to gulp down his discomfort as he walked back over to Kaminari and started shaking him. Kaminari, Kaminari, wake up. A small grunt emanated from the boy before he turned over, clutching some blankets and a pillow to his chest. 
showed his head in irritation and a hint of concern. If it were just a matter of the boy brushing his teeth and changing into pajamas, the homeroom teacher would have just soon left Kaminari there to deal with the consequences of falling asleep on the couch. As it were, though, he needed to make sure the boy didn't endanger himself with the firm fabric Shota had felt underneath his student's shirt when he carried him upstairs. An idea popped into Shota's head and he decided to try it, no matter how ridiculous it might have been. Come in, Ori, they're starting a water balloon fight against Bakugo, and they're letting you throw the first one. Don't knock it till you're trying, Aizawa mused dryly as Kaminari's eyes fluttered open with sleepy excitement. What? Sensei, what are you doing in my room? The boy mumbled in confusion, looking around and trying to piece together how we got there. You fell asleep on the couch. Aizawa deadpanned. You need to get ready for bed. No! Kaminari whined, trying to once more hide under his blankets. Kaminari, Shota scolded, hoping his student would wake up enough to realize what he needed to do without Aizawa having to tell him. My alarm's automatic and I burst my teeth earlier. Just let me sleep in my jeans, Dad. He whined, not seeing the flush of color that raced through Aizawa's face and the unironic usage of a dink word since he had his face smooshed in a pillow. Kaminari, I'm serious, Aizawa warned, to which he got a half-hearted gall way wave. He sighed before finally saying, You can't sleep in your binder. Kaminari sat upright at that, still half asleep but obviously aware of the predicament. Oh, fuck, you're right, he mumbled Aizawa, not bothering to chastise him for language when he was still half asleep. The boy reached under his shirt and showed immediately looked away and started heading for the door before hearing a zzz and then the sound of clothes hitting the floor. Hesitantly, Shota looked back, only to find a zip-up binder on the floor, and Kaminari, on his way back to sleep, sprawled out on his bed like a starfish. I wonder how he did that, Shota thought, before deciding to leave well enough alone. Good night, Sensei, came a half asleep mutter as Shota closed Kaminari's door. Good night, Kaminari. Aizawa sighed with maybe a hint of affection as he closed his student's door and went back downstairs to finish grading papers. Class 1A! Group chat. 6.43. Twink 4. Hey, uh, thanks to whoever forced me into bed last night, almost slept with my binder on, and that would have been a big no bueno. Kermit, I believe Sensei had to carry you upstairs since you fell asleep on him. Twink 4. Oh, shit, wait, really? Mr. Murder. Yeah, you pulled a full raccoon eyes and pass the fuck out on his lap. Alien Queen. Hey, shut up, he can be cozy. Mr. Murder. Get more light. Get on. Wait, did you tell Sensei you're trans then? Twink Thor. No, I guess I just must have remembered to take it off myself. Punk bitch. No shade, but unlikely. We have to remind you to change out of your binder like every other gym period. Forget never. Don't freak out, but Sensei probably just put two to two together when he felt firm fabric under your shirt. He did carry you to bed, and he has to be incredibly perceptive to work as an underground hero. Twink Thor. That idea actually doesn't scare me as much as I thought it would. Maybe it's time I told the teachers I'm trans. Defying gravity. That may seem for awesome. No pressure, but we support whatever you choose. Furry. Same. Alien Queen, same. Fucking never, same. Punk bitch, same. Get hard, same. Mr. Murder, same. Oh, thanks, guys. Even Marco, bro. Mr. Murder, shut the hell your face. Twink Thor, heart. Mr. Murder, broken heart. Twink Thor, crying face. Mr. Murder, just kidding, heart. Twink Thor, big surprise face. Mr. Murder, that was shitty hair. Punk bitch. Why is Kirishima in your room at like 7 a.m.? Mr. Murder. Mr. Murder is offline. Twink Thor. OMG! Small main. Kaminori, we might know he's queer. Twink, Twink Thor. Yeah, but Kirishima? Small main. Okay, yeah, it's cute, but don't tell him that if you value your life. Aizawa gave a small smile as he sipped his first cup of coffee for the day. And if he gave another one when he saw Bakugo and Kirishima's intertwined pinkies in the hallway the next day, or when Kaminari nervously walked up to him after a lesson the next week and came out to him, and apparently the rest of his teachers afterwards, 
Well, that's just his business. Oh, and if he put up a shopping list so the kids didn't have to buy their own groceries and toiletries and feminine products now that their parents weren't shopping for them, well, you may have money to spare, and it was certainly a worthwhile investment. Though Mina's 43 slips of paper with only two-ply toilet paper, please, might have jammed the personal groceries request box, and Aizawa might have given in just to get her to stop. Things went on as usual, for the most part, for another week before Shota found the perfect opportunity to announce his presence in the group chat. Though by this point, he was fairly certain around half of his kids had figured it out. After all, the dorms had a strict rules schedule, and what better way to enforce it than terrifying his students with the knowledge that he must have seen their tea sessions. Class 1A! Group chat. Yesterday, 1932. Naked Streaker. Hey, can someone bring me some toilet paper? Alien Green. I got you, fam! Naked Streaker. Thanks, bro. Oh my god, two pie! Today, 637. Aizawa Shota. Ignoring the detention worthy offense of leaving dishes unwatched in the communal kitchen sink. Which one of your little gremlins am I expelling for the disgusting habit of eating Cheez Its with peanut butter? Aizawa watched with a manic grin as the chaos unfolded. Truly, he'd been waiting for this moment for too long, he thought as he heard a few scattered screeches of panic from the dorms upstairs. Alien Queen, hey, at what? When it's sensing in here? Aizawa showed him, someone needs another situational awareness lesson. I've been here for a month. Alien Queen, what? How? No. <laughs> I added Sensei to the group chat when he gave us his cell phone number. I thought it would be a good way for him to make sure we were being responsible and keep up with us on days when we didn't have school. Alien Queen. Ida, how could you? Define gravity. Yeah, Ida, you probably should have let us know you added her teacher to our class chat. Yeah. I thought you all knew. His name was added to the chat members list. Funky elbows. We did not know. Funky never. Actually, I knew. Edgy. As did I. Small Bean. He is in the chat members list. Mr. Murder. Jesus, I didn't realize y'all were this dumb. And that was Shoda. Bakugo. Mr. Murder. What? Francophile. It's true, but you shouldn't say it. Sparkles! Naked Streaker. Why had sparkles, though? Why change a classic? Oh, wait. Oh, shit! Get hard. What? My meld. What is it? Naked Streaker, Hagagare, changed their name to Kekleon. Get hard. Funk! My meld. LOL. Tentacle Hentai, Shoji, changed their name to Octopus. Get hard. Kirishima changed their name to Die Hard. Mr. Murder. Actually, that's pretty good. Kekleon. You're just sad for your boyfriend. Die Hard. Hagagare, what the fuck Sensei's here? Mr. Murder. He already knew. Aizawa Shoda. I already knew. Die hard. Oh, I guess you were here for that. That's super awkward. Aizawa Shoda. I'm not your father. That's not my business, as long as you're responsible. Die hard. I crave death. Aizawa Shoda. Welcome to every day of my life, kid. Punk bitch. Jiro changed their name to Punk Butch. Yo, mamo. Ooh, nice. Punk Butch. Thanks, babe. Aizawa Shoda. Didn't know about that one. Punk Butch. Shrug. Yao Mamo. Shrug. Furry. Coda. Changed their name to Snow White. Small Bean. Hey, I like that one a lot. Snow White. Big smile. Twink Thor. Aizawa Shoda. I'm waiting. Twink Thor. What? Aizawa Shoda. No. I have admin privileges. Don't make me use them. Twink Thor. Eagle! Yum. I thought that's appropriate. Aizawa Shoda changed Twink Thor Kaminori's name to Electric. Electric. Okay, A, rude, and B, lame. Aizawa Shoda. A, I don't want it to think Twink whenever I look at one of my students, and B, you can change it. I'm bad at naming. Electric. But Eraser Head is a pretty cool name. Aizawa Shoda. Thanks, Mike came up with it. Alien Queen. Oh, that explains a lot. Aizawa Shoda. Watch it, problem child. Alien Queen. Big smiley face. Electric Kaminari changed their name to Pikachu. 
Kick me on. Hey, get your own franchise. I call Pokemon. Pikachu. Crying face. As our showed up. I got got a share. Kick me on. Oh, fine. Pikachu. Smile face. Okay, but since then, you gotta give yourself a nickname. Join the crew! Yum! Aizawa Sensei is not obligated to do anything. He may choose whatever name or nickname he does or doesn't want. Alien Queen. Lame! Kick Leon. One of us! Pikachu. One of us! Die Hard. One of us! Frigglefog. One of us! Punk Butch. One of us! Divine Gravity. One of us! Small Bean. One of us! Funky Elbows. One of us! Is our shoulder? No. Eddie, one of us. Is our shoulder? That's incredibly disturbing. You're all little gremlins, you know that. My mom, we're all well aware. Thank you. Is our shoulder? Change their name to minus five hour energy. Pick it up. Minus five hour energy. Bear, now that we all have appropriate nicknames, are you satisfied? Yum. Um, Sensei? Fucking never. Oh, is that what Sensei's a busy man eater? Don't waste your time. Spit it out. Minus five hour energy. Yes, what is it, Eda? Yum! What about Todoroki Kun's nickname? Minus five hour energy. What about it, Eda? Fucking never. Yeah, what about it, Eda? Yum! Is it not inappropriate? Minus five hour energy. I have no idea what you're talking about. I see nothing wrong. Nyum. Never mind. Minus five hour energy. Get ready for school problem, children. Shona looks up to refill his empty coffee cup and allows himself a small grin as the chat slowly dies down. He's halfway through his second cup, scrolling through the morning news when his notification appears and he clicks it, nearly joking when he sees it. The group chat, class 1A, has been renamed... Problem children! Minus five hour energy, as our Shona has been renamed Dad.